in the previous part we understood how the structure is of a chemical synapse and the diagram is still here we are going to use the same diagram to understand the conduction of impulse through this chemical synapse conduction of impulse through chemical synapse now the first thing that happens is when this end bulb it receives the stimulus we have seen how the stimulus travels it can go from or in the form of smaller loops charge by charge or it can jump from one node of Ranvier to the other whichever way the impulse reaches here as soon as the impulse reaches here the voltage triggers opening of calcium channels so if we have to just write the steps stimulus or not stimulus sorry the impulse impulse reaching exon and bulb exon and bulb what happens after exon and bulb what will happen after that after this due to that voltage or that potential calcium channels open when this calcium channels open the calcium ions which are in the medium they move in so what is going in is now calcium ions these calcium ions they go and bind on the inner side of the membrane there are receptors on the inner side of presynaptic membrane so calcium binds to inner presynaptic membrane now this calcium is attached to this presynaptic membrane and because of this it triggers these synaptic vesicles to release the neurotransmitter so these synaptic vesicles they come here and release the neurotransmitter it ruptures the neurotransmitter is released so because of this synaptic vesicles release neurotransmitter by exocytosis the process by which the chemical is released here in this cleft or in this space is neuro or uh, sorry by exocytosis so now this neurotransmitter containing vesicle comes here and these neurotransmitters are released as soon as these neurotransmitters are released they go and bind to these chemoreceptors so now what is happening is next step neurotransmitter binds to chemoreceptors and these chemoreceptors are on post synaptic membrane so now as soon as this complex is formed complex of the neurotransmitter and the receptor the chemoreceptor now here the membrane permeability changes what we have to remember here that outer membrane is electropositive inner membrane is or inner side is electronegative as soon as the membrane permeability changes sodium ions they are going to move in and as soon as sodium ions move in the inner side becomes electropositive and outer becomes electronegative that means the impulse has been generated here so from here the impulse was coming when impulse reaches the exon end bulb what are the changes because of that action potential which is reaching here calcium channels have opened calcium ions move in to the exon end bulb they go and bind on the inner side of the presynaptic membrane 
this triggers rupturing of the synaptic vesicles releasing the neurotransmitters. As soon as this chemical is released, it is going to attach to the receptors which are on the post synaptic membrane. Now a complex is formed that is receptor and neurotransmitter. As soon as this complex is formed, the membrane permeability is going to change and sodium channels open. So sodium ions move in and now the inner side of the membrane will get electropositive, outer will get electronegative. This is what is depolarization. Now the impulse has reached from one neuron to the other one. Now it will get conducted on this one. From dendrite it will reach to the cyton and then it will be taken by another exon to another neuron through a synapse. Now this is how the conduction has taken place. This depolarization wave will be conducted in the form of the impulse. Now the problem is going to be of this neurotransmitter. If the neurotransmitter remains in the cleft, it will keep getting attached to this receptor. Every time it attaches to the receptor, one more impulse will be generated. So one impulse comes from here neurotransmitter if stays here will go on generating impulse after impulse after impulse so it has to be removed it will be removed or it will be broken down by an enzyme we will take an example here say this neurotransmitter which is here is acetylcholine suppose this is acetylcholine and it attaches here so the post synaptic membrane it releases an enzyme this enzyme is called this is released from this post synaptic membrane the name of the enzyme is acetylcholine esterase we write it as a c h e this is acetyl Choline esterase. This acetylcholine esterase is going to break down acetylcholine into two parts acetic acid and choline. Now these two substances will move into the exon end bulb and will be used to synthesize new vesicle or new neurotransmitter containing vesicle. So this acetylcholine, once it has done its job, once it stimulates that receptor and the membrane permeability changes and the impulse has been transferred to the next neuron, its job is done. It should be removed. Otherwise, it will keep stimulating this neuron continuously. So its removal is under the control of postsynaptic membrane. Postsynaptic membrane produces enzyme. If the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, the enzyme is acetylcholine esterase. This is the short form which we write. Acetylcholine esterase will break down this acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline. Both these substances, they move into the exon end bulb again synthesize, uh, join to form acetylcholine and packed into the vesicles. So if this is acetylcholine, if the neurotransmitter is adrenaline, if neurotransmitter is adrenaline, then the enzyme which is used to break it down because if acetylcholine comes here, then this also needs to be broken down. The enzyme, if neurotransmitter is adrenaline, the enzyme is monoamine oxidase. And this is the enzyme for acetylcholine. Enzyme, enzyme for acetylcholine. So there are two 
neurotransmitters that we are talking of. It can be adrenaline or it could be acetylcholine. If it is acetylcholine, there has to be an enzyme to break it down. And if it is adrenaline, then the enzyme is going to be monoamine oxidase, which will break it down. The purpose is once the neurotransmitter has done its job, it should be removed from this cleft. Otherwise, it will go on stimulating the neuron or the dendrite of the next neuron. Because this gap, the synaptic cleft is big in case of chemical synapse, we have written this gap as 10 to 20 nanometers. The stimulus or that charge which is there is not able to jump from this membrane to this membrane as it was able to jump from one node of Ranvier to the other node of Ranvier. It can only, because the charges move, we were talking about that if it is electropositive negative, or let me do it this way, it is depolarized. So we said this charge positive will be attracted by the negative, this will be attracted. For attracting the opposite charge, it should be in that uh, distance. It should be close to attract this charge. If these charges are far away from each other, they will not be able to attract. So here, the gap is so much that the charges are not able to move. And that is why a chemical is released. So in case of chemical synapse, conduction takes place in two steps. One, release of the neurotransmitter into the cleft. Two, receiving the neurotransmitter by the receptors on postsynaptic membrane which results in generation of the impulse on the next neuron. This is how the impulse gets conducted from one neuron to the other neuron through this synapse in case of a chemical synapse. And the reason why we are calling it a chemical because this neurotransmitter which is produced is the chemical and it is helping in this conduction of impulse. So this is a chemical synapse, its structure and functioning. Now in the next part, we will understand how this synapse and electrical synapses, how are these two different from each other?